Hey, yeah, folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to the end of the world. Well, the end game of millennia. That's right, we're back with another video. This is the same game as my previous video, our wonderful game as Sweden, which I've enjoyed so much. I have actually started a few other games, but I want to come back to this one for this video, which is going to be focusing on the end game of millennia. Uh, again, this is sponsored by Paradox. Thank you very much to them for doing that. And do be sure to check out the description box down below for more information about where you can grab millennia, which as I'm recording this is just a couple of days away from release. Uh, also note, I will be live streaming this on release week over at twitch.tv slash quill 18. Uh, you can hit a follow there. You'll get an alert when we go live. In addition to that, if you do exclamation mark next stream in the chat, you'll set it, get a countdown timer for the next streams. So the plan is on release, we are going to be doing a proper live stream campaign of the whole thing. I'm also eager to be on the release version of the game at that point, because here I am still on the pre-release um, influencer build, which may or may not represent the final product. With all that out of the way, space. So let's take a look at where we are on the research track over here. I'm currently at the end of the age of rocketry, and we are on the cusp of getting ready to enter the age of information, which if I've tracked things properly is the follow the final age of the game. I have to complete my heavy machinery technology over here, which is going to take me two turns. That will give me four technologies in here, and we're going to move on to the age information. I don't have the six bips in the social fabric track to enter the age of ecology, which too bad. I really like that sort of, um, is this, is this solar punk? Is that that kind of vibe over here? I might be, uh, I might be mixing up my punks, but that, that kind of looks like that. And then we've got the age of visitors as well. Discover that we are not alone. Dot, dot, dot. I don't know. Nothing happened over there. Possibly if I'd gotten our rocketry started sooner, maybe there's a chance something could have developed over there. But it looks like we're going to go into the age of information. I was, I believe, the first person to enter the age of rocketry over here. Although Brazil, I think, beat me to the age of revolution. So Brazil is actually doing quite well on the other continent. I've got an envoy sending over there right now so I can do some more snoop and a boot and uh, see what the situation is and maybe set up some research treaties or something like that. Uh, we'll see what we can shake out. In any case, the space stuff. So with the rocketry technology, I was able to build a space center and that unlocks this so-called um, mega project for space stuff. Now, actually, it turns out Brazil beat me to orbital rocketry uh, on this turn here. I believe uh, they did this. They got their first prize for orbital rocketry. Now, in theory, it's not the worst thing in the world. We're both democratic powers. Yep. You unlock factions once you enter the age of uh, rocketry. You get to choose between communism, democracy and theocracy. I chose democracy. I was in here first and I'm, in fact, accruing a decent amount of ideology there. Although Brazil's been doing a little bit of a catch up. So we'll see Yeah, the all factions, just democracy. So clearly Sweden and Brazil, the great powers in the world. And we are not, you know, we share uh, uh, we share a we share a faction. We're both democratic, but I still feel like there's some tension brewing over here. Now, if we can get our ideology up to 2,500 points, we'll unlock corporate R&D. Um, so uh, generating these ideology points are quite good. And then we've got United We Stand. And finally, unlocks ability to spend wealth to rush research if mostly complete. That sounds good because we are making tons of money. I'm making over 1,000 wealth per turn. The other thing that's ridiculous are my improvement points over here. 137 improvement points per turn. Um, I was going to say, luckily, my, my improvement point cap just raised up to 400 with this age. It was 300 because it was basically maxing out my my improvement point every other turn. But the fact of the matter is all of my capital cities over here are basically as developed as they can be at this time. There's a bunch of things that now I look at in hindsight, I'm like, oh, I would have done this differently. I would have done this differently on my next playthroughs to sort of optimize the spacing. Um, and But some of the land of these these cities change as we've moved up through the ages because our improvements become more efficient. Like, for example, right over here, this recycling center, which is the third tier if I'm remembering all the steps properly in the sanitation technology, right? We get, um, I think it's the third tier, but this gives us a lot more sanitation. It also gives you more worker slots, right? So a mo at, for the longest time in the game, each one of these tiles could only be worked by a single worker. Oh, these vats have been destroyed. There you go. Um, but then we've unlocked a few more things. So I've got another recycling center there. I thought I might be able to show off maybe at another city. Um, Basteras? to say the mills and things like that. There we go, milling factory over here to turn grain into, or to turn wheat or rice into flour. So this uh, starts to consume power, which is a new resource we have unlocked, but um, does, does more aggressive conversion, convert more wheat into flour, and it's got the extra worker slots. You increase the density of these places, and then you can make 
uh, you change your thing. So I think part of the game is actually going to be ripping out some improvements and then replacing them as time goes on to tweak your production cues. Not all of these are perfect. You can see over here, I am indeed missing technically one wheat for full conversion, but my food in uh, Vastras, or however it's pronounced, is actually overkill. I'm, I'm probably, what is this, about 300%? Because one, or not quite, maybe 250% is actually the need thing. So I could actually pull back on the food production a little bit. And I may, in fact, do that. Um, I, I could pull back probably on a mill, and then mill less flour, and then maybe even pull back on some of our wheat production or something like that. I could also just go and maybe move some of these pawns around for now. Although I don't have any empty spots other than an extra spot at the mill, which I don't need. So anyway, these, these are all little optimizations that we can work on as uh, as we go forward. But let's take a look at this from the Earth to the moon, because this sounds really exciting. Orbital rocketry, again, slightly behind Brazil, but hopefully it's not going to be too bad. We are going to try to take our first step. So by establishing high altitude test vehicles and investing in experimental rocketry, we can attempt to put the first artificial satellite in orbit around the Earth. Well, not the first, but we'll see what we can do. So right now it looks like we've got a 65% chance to succeed here. I can spend some specialists to fund the space agency for an extra 20%. We'll also fund the military space agency, which is gonna take 50 warfare XP, which seems fine. So we're up to 95% over here, which seems pretty good. Um, install additional radio tele telemetry, interestingly enough, decreases our chance. Oh, but we give me exploration XP. Oh, interesting. And I don't have the final frontier technology, so I can't do this. That is actually really interesting. Um, and I would like exploration XP because it would help us go through our um, our little uh, government, our domains over here, which we'll take a look at in a moment. So let me go ahead and try to lunch this. Mmm, lunch. Oh, I didn't realize we'd get a cutscene. How lovely is this? Beep, 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 beep. Our successful launch has proven the theory of orbital mechanics. We have the technology to reach this new frontier. Awesome. Preparation for our next mission are underway. will be available in one turn. So again, Brazil, because they launch this sooner, we'll probably get an earlier crack at this, but will they have the resources or not? Let's take a look at our government picks over here. So I have chosen a democracy for my new government. Um, and we're going through this. So of course, we do spend the government power for this. Uh, the democracy reformed is going to be great to pick this just for extra culture generation. The innovation is going to be beautiful and brilliant. Uh, we do need to pick, I believe, one more in here for that to unlock. So what are we going to look for? So this could unlock a new government domain power. I'd have to spend government power to trigger this, but generating more knowledge is nice. We can get the science research pact, which gives us more science from research treaties. We'd have to establish some research treaties, it's okay. This is another power over here, boost regional ideology efficiency. I didn't actually mention it, but let me tell you what, let's take commission research. There we go, that gets rid of the lock. Um, and you can see ideology is indeed a need in our cities along with power. What's interesting about power is that unlock the, unlike the other needs, which grow with your population, Power need is simply generated by the buildings that you build. So if we take a look at Vastros here and the buildings that we built or could build, for example, oh, weirdly, the radio stations need power. Ah, okay. Oh, the space center over here probably does. Yeah, there we go. So this space center building here, which I can clearly spam out more of these bad boys, the space center building um, does generate more exploration XP, but you can see it generates one power drain. So um, it's buildings that actually consume power, as well as some of the higher tier improvements. For example, this milling factory over here also has a power drain. So you have to uh, balance that. There are two buildings that I currently have access to that generate power in the cities themselves. If we... There's power grid, which came first and generates uh, six power. And then over here, the central power generates 12, although it does generate a need for education, which is fine. Uh, and I mean, we'll get some more. We also have some tile improvements that we can build. You can see with power here, I can build an oil refinery if I have petroleum in this city, which I don't currently. I can also build the power station, which consumes coal. And then finally, I've actually just unlocked this wind farm over here, which is kind of nice. It just costs specialist slots. Uh, it generates three power by itself. It generates three more if it's worked. So I could do that. I mean, we're at 150-ish percent needs, so I don't know that I need to go and build more power generation right now, but I certainly could, which is gonna be okay. Um, anything exciting in the civic stuff? I mean, certainly we got like much higher tier buildings, which are great. Oh, we didn't realize the apartment buildings generated ideology. Now that's very interesting. Huh. Okay. 
Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Right now, the needs of all my buildings are good. Oh, also, um, I feel a little bit silly that I hadn't noticed it properly in the last video that prosperity can grow quite a lot higher. Actually, um, until I think I entered this era, my prosperity cap was 350%. So our caps dropped down to 300, but we can have our vassals generate a ton of stuff for us. Now, I would very much like, especially with all my... Um, all my improvement points that are being generated every turn. I actually would like to integrate another city and then spend those improvement points to do that. But right now, my government XP is going to go towards uh, developing democracy. Maybe after we do the reform democracy, maybe I'll go and start integrating stuff. But the other thing I would like is more exploration XP, and I have been working to increase the income for that because, first of all, I still haven't finished Scholars from way back when, which I should totally do over here. I should grab this legacy here now um, for Social Fabric Insight. I guess, oh yeah, that's right. I just picked the center of learning and I hadn't realized I could pick up this legacy for so cheap. Um, I'm going to do that. What do we want? Translator? What's an improvement? Okay, yeah, we'll do this. Social Fabric Insight's gonna be nice and plus one exploration XP. More exploration XP means we can progress through this a bit more. Hey, that's interesting. If I could get one more, which Social Fabric was it? Oh, Social Fabric tracks half completed. Oh, oh, so I need one more in Tenacity. So it needs all the fat, all the social tracks half completed, four of six. So if I had every single fabric track half completed, be there. The problem is I keep spending my engineering points on something else. Um, and because I haven't really needed the discount, the improvement cost discount, I haven't needed it. And we've got tons of good stuff to do with engineering. So I really haven't been doing the ingenuity thing to boost it up. Okay, so we're clearly not gonna do that, but it would fun to try it one time to finish everything. I guess we may as well spend the money to boost our culture here and see what we can do with it. Um, right now, I think I've done a Eureka this era, but it might not be a bad idea to rush that a little bit more. I've done a few more local reforms. They've been quite good to boost things. We don't need an extra town. Luoyang could take an extra town, but I can't build one at sea. So there's not really... Oh, okay. Right. No, I could say, oh, I could build a town here to expand the borders. But no, it would just be adding a town to Shanghai in this case, which isn't what we're looking for. So I'm not really looking for that. Uh, I do like the cutting edge because innovations can lead to interesting benefits, but we've got good innovation rate right now. And it's about to finish. And when it finishes, it, it we lose a big percentage of it. So uh, you can see reduced to third reduced to 30 percent so investing a bunch now might be a waste inventing investing it in it right after an innovation triggered is nice you know let's go to the eureka it'll complete heavy machinery which can give us a whole bunch of new tile upgrades oh we also get a uh, main battle tank that's a fun technology machine shop is a improvement that i don't think oh it is an upgrade because it's a new way of converting steel into power tools or no maybe i didn't have that one Defense manufacturer improvement. That's cool because it eats a lot of power, but I was noticing this, it does generate a ton of ideology. Also converts steel to something, in this case, missiles for warfare XP. We've seen um, tile improvements. I think it was an armory first that converted uh, the ingots into warfare XP by calling it something else. I did also take, I believe from an innovation event, I think from one of these, I did take the thing where it makes it that these defense manufacturers give us plus one knowledge, which is kind of nice. What else we got here? The concrete plant, which uh, can, it just produces concrete, which gives us production and more improvement points. I don't need more improvement points, but that's kind of nice. Uh, the powered quarry over here, the blast quarry, and then finally a marina, which is an upgrade over our docks or whatever. Hang on a sec. Whatever these are called. The harbors. There we go. So marina is an upgrade over that. It doesn't give us any more exploration points, which is too bad because it was kind of nice, but it would generate more wealth from tiles that are already there. So we've got lots of upgrades available, but in terms of research, I think I'm ready to push on to the age of information. I think I'm gonna go for it. We might backfill some of these. I also might go and backfill, say, steel and industry, maybe even or, um, aeronautics, but for now, I'm happy to just push forward into the next age and see what we can do over there. Um, so yeah, we've got upgrades. How concrete plants are upgrades over brickworks. But do they, do they actually convert clay into anything? Maybe I could get rid of the clay pits. So right now in Luyang, I have one spare clay. I'm currently making nine bricks. If I upgrade you to a concrete plant, which I can do by clicking the green arrow or this, I'm gonna have a bunch of extra clay around. Now the clay still gives some production by itself, but it's less interesting 
if we don't need it. And this doesn't make sense in, as an evolution, right? We, you know, clay and then baking bricks was how we did a lot of construction brick. I mean, if we weren't making out of the wood, but nowadays, um, and to give a, a shoot it to another great paradox published game of surviving Mars, one of the things with surviving Mars is with the developers, they said the thing that mankind produces more than anything else in the entire world is concrete. And it makes sense. I mean, our construction is all going to be that at this point. Um, so removing all these clay pits and then reclaiming this land for something else could be very useful. We can see Luang could use more housing, could use more sanitation. So I think we're going to dump a bunch of our improvement points over here. This building. Uh, so yeah, we'll replace this brickworks as well. And I guess that brickworks too. So in theory, we are not producing any bricks anymore. There we go. We just have the concrete. And yeah, I can start replacing this clay, which is good because Lang doesn't have a lot of land to work with. It's got all this sea. So I'm going to be very happy to remove this. And first of all, I'm going to build an apartment building over here. Gives us tons of housing, some ideology points, some wealth uh, if we work it as well. Um, it does eat some power, but that's OK. Actually, we're still at 200 power percent power. That's good. Let me replace this. We could clearly use some extra sanitation. Um, so we're going to drop down a recycling center, which is going to overkill that. We could use some luxury, I suppose, instead of the apartments. I mean, it does generate plus one luxury here. I could have made a higher tier building. Uh, yeah, let me get rid of you. Um, well, higher tier, not exactly right. But I mean, I could have built a mansion, for example, which generates less housing, but generates more luxury. But there's a few other ways to do the luxury. I mean, gold mines. Uh, maybe we could import some jewelry from one of our other cities. I mean, we're not hurting. We're at 187% needs, which is pretty good. Um, we do have one idle worker who could go to the recycling center, but doesn't need it because it's 200%. So I should build something else. And if anything else, it might just be more production stuff. Oh, you know what? We could go down to computing. I haven't started building these. I don't have rare earth metals. A computer lab. Lots of power drain, but we're 200% power over here converts one computer to one computer simulation. Oh, we need the computer factory for that. And office also converts computers. Hmm. For now. Yeah, we don't need a stone cutter. Oh, we could get start working on our defense manufacturing. Oh, but then we don't have the steel manufacturing over here either. Yeah, I'm not sure. Power's okay. You don't have more education need. You're good there. I guess I'll probably just put down another concrete plant. Get you some more production. That's going to be okay. Now, if you are working these harbors, I may as well go and upgrade them just so that we get some extra wealth out of this. So yeah, I've burned through all my improvement points. And of course, this is just one city, but we get it back so fast. That's the thing. Like, man, oh man, does it go quick. But I go through this sort of feast and famine with those points. Uh, I did use the promote cultural exports a lot to help make sure our prosperity was capped at all our cities. Oh, we're back at 350% there and there. What about Upper Vasby? Oh, okay. That's fine. I've been using clear cut because I haven't really needed the lumber production too much and I needed more clear terrain in a few areas. Scholars, I mean, at some point we'll probably just finish you just to say, but right now I do want to save points for the space agency stuff. All right, let's go ahead and end turn and we'll see what opens up over here. next. There's I got to say, what's impressive is how much there's to do in this game without being concerned about warfare. Uh, I mean, there's less uh, ooh, lots of barbarians speaking of warfare, um, unless I want to go and amass a giant Navy and go overseas. There's no targets for me right now. Uh, when I got my my warfare out of the way in the early game, but I'm not missing. I feel like there's there's so much per turn to do as is here, which is really good. The land management aspects, right? If we compare it to other turn based 4X civilization building games, right, where you put down maybe districts one time and then you're kind of just done with it. Right? I actually like that we're constantly kind of revisiting our cities in here. Now, that might be quite frustrating and difficult to do if we were having to manage every single one of our cities. But here with the vassal system, we only have to manage a subset. Now, that was actually surprisingly ouchy, but these are not 
uh, necessarily god tier units. Oh, um, let's get some battle tanks in here, although this one is pretty damaged. But I just, I realize now that I could have gotten you upgraded first. This is my envoy, which I'm just sending overseas as kind of a bit of a scout as well. Uh, maybe I should build a bit of a navy because we do have some barbarians buzzing around in the sea. Now, I think there was a little bit more to deal with up here. Do I have an army in Mediolanum? I really should. Because first of all, just for unrest prevention, you must be on the move. Oh, I sent you over here to deal with this guy. There we go. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure you've got one. Uh, you might be wondering why I have all these uh, recon balloons in these armies. Well, I'd actually hoped for which age was it? Is it an alternate to Age of Revolution? Or Age of Enlightenment? Uh, it might even be an alternate for Age of Rocketry. I think it was an alternate for Age of Revolution. Yeah. Um, I had wanted to do the... There's like an Age of Aether or something. Sort of a steampunky kind of age. I really had wanted to do that. And you need five of those recon balloons to do it. Um, I delayed advancing the age to build the recon balloons. Because I hadn't noticed it right away. And that's how Brazil beat me. And so they started the Age of Revolution. So even though I got my five recon balloons. Um, they triggered the Age of Revolution before I could get the Age of Aether. So, uh, we didn't get that. No, no cool alternate age there. The only alternate age I've done on this run is the Age of Blood, which turned out to be a pretty fun time. So, no complaints there. Let's blow up this Barbarian Encampment. Ooh, I'm going to take the innovation for sure, although we are going to lose a bunch here, but what's 250 wealth going to do for us? Nothing. Nothing. It's pennies to me. Oh, we can get another Space Agency ability. Uh, plus one Space Race Directive. Yeah, okay, let's grab that. And speaking of, from Earth to the Moon over here. Interesting, we don't didn't actually get an explicit reminder on that. Exploratory probes. Now that we have the technology and the experience to send our machines in space, we should consider where we want to explore first. So we can hire additional computing staff, spend some specialists. I mean, easy decision. Uh, we can invest in electronic computer machines uh, with our engineering XP. Sure. And we could take a hit. Heliocentric probe orbit, again, exploration XP, which is both for scholars and space agency would be nice. Televised intention to fly to the moon for arts XP. I'm just going to go for 95% success chance and cross my fingers. Lunch. Two, one. Blast off. Ooh, we have tentacles on this one. Oh, I mean, I'm assuming they're antennas. Doesn't that have a weirdly organic look? Our probes are sending back a lot of useful data and our national pride is higher than ever. We are on the brink of sending our people among the stars. So, humans in space available in one turn. We're ahead of Brazil, that's great. And we're trying to get to the moon. How's our faction stuff coming along? Okay, good. Brazil hasn't like shot up like a million miles again. I'm gonna go and unlock the tolerance here, so I'm not gonna wanna spend there. Government points. We could commission a research project, right? Target region, plus five knowledge. Uh, but I think I'm happy to use my uh, democracy XP or my government XP to level up my democracy still. So I'm happy with that. Let's go to the next turn. Oh, yeah, there were some tile improvements I could be doing here, too. To make sure to spend on that United States, Brazil. There's not a lot of people left in this game. They've people have been bumped off. To be fair, I'm responsible for some of that, but not all of it. All right. Look at these tanks. They're huge. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. You really, did we really not finish you off? Wow, I am disappointed in you tanks. All right, yeah, let's uh, get another level of tolerance here for social fabric tolerance. Okay. Humans in space. Oh, Brazil's caught up as well. Um, It's going to be risky. But we have top-notch scientists and brave souls willing to help us achieve the next big step for humankind. So, yeah, test with animals. Hard code engine flight path trajectories with engineering. Train pilots for onboard adjustment. Uh, over 100%. I was wondering about that. So do we dare... Do we dare... I would like exploration XP. This would bring us back down to 90. We miss a turn. Presumably we can do it again after a turn delay. You know, but I, I don't want to lose tempo. I want to be the first on the moon. I'm not going to risk it. There we go. 110% chance. 
There's no such thing as too much overkill. Great. Two. One. Blast off. What is this ship going to look like? Oh, not a ship, just a person. Shouldn't you have... Is that your jetpack? That just looks like your life support module. This doesn't feel like the EVA... Um, not the EV. I don't know what it's called, but the little, little jetpack thing. We've done it. A live human has made it to space and returned safely to Earth. There is no reason to stop there. We must push onward and upward. All right. Tons of culture generation, which is beautiful. And then humans on the moon next turn. Yeah, baby. Uh, I got the money. Let's rush the culture by a turn. And... Well, I'm not going to put more cutting edge because we're just going to lose tons of it. I could propaganda here. This just reduces the chaos generation down to zero, which might be good. The thing is, I keep sitting on enough money here that I can just pay off the chaos event so it's not too much of a problem. Um, we're still in the same era. I've already you recaps. So we're not getting as much uh, research here. You can see it's only about a turn and a half worth of research from hitting this button. I think I'll probably do a local reform or do we absorb an outpost? You know what? Hang on a sec. We've got an outpost of, hang on, we can go and find our outpost over here. Let me just shrinkify this view. There you go. We've got an outpost over here. Let's absorb. Oh, does it have to absorb it into capital? Absorb only outpost and all its territory in adjacent region. This requires the territories of both the output and region to be touching and the region to be able to support an additional town. Oh, Obrero, actually Obrero doesn't have a town unless it's trying to absorb it into here, this outpost does not border your region. I'm thinking we may have to go and integrate. I'm going to integrate. I'm probably going to uh, integrate Amara Amaravati over here because it's got a lot more territory for us to work with. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, again, it's competing for our government XP with the democracy stuff. It might be worthwhile. You know what? I think I like that idea. I think that's what we're going to do next turn. Speaking of next turn. Come over here and yeah, you'll be able to land next turn. Thank you. You've got to boop that. Oh, I can't repair this because this is part of a vassal territory. Um, Medio. I think, you know what? I'm going to park these guys here. I'm going to send. Oh, I can't because they're, these guys are in the way. Let me just wait here one turn. I'm going to send you to Medio. So, what kind of upgrades we got here? Vats can be upgraded to a winery. Two grapes or rice to wine. Well, this makes fine wine, which is just straight up better. Excellent. Doesn't change the inputs at all. And this quarry can be upgraded to a blast quarry. Wow, goes from two marble to eight? That's a lot. You're at 200% power. Okay, let's do it. You're still at 200% power. That's really good. We still have improvement points. We should do a quick little look around. What can we upgrade over here? Brickworks. Oh, do we do the same thing over here and replace the clay? Well, right now, this six, three bricks is making me six production points. This would be 12. So this, this is a straight up upgrade. And then we still get the clay and it's plus one per. So we definitely want to go and replace some more of those. If we wanted more, we could use, I mean, we could use housing, we could use sanitation, we could use education here. Although we do have some empty tiles. This has just been growing. So let's put a little bit of that down. Um, our luxuries, fine. Oh, it's interesting. So luxury, we're not above, we're not actually at 200%. We're at like just over 100%. I guess the luxury numbers work differently. Luxury need will never be less than 100% satisfied. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, let's start by plopping down a public school to satisfy the need for education. And I think I'm going to go ahead and also put down a recycling center to fully satisfy the sanitation. Well, we've got some empty tiles over here. So if we built a house versus an apartment building. Our building doesn't need power, but it also generates ideology points. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So the power did dip a little bit. I could go and throw down a wind farm. I'm assuming Kai Feng here has its basic power buildings. Yes, it does. All right, let's go, let's go and build a wind farm. There we go. 
It's not maxing out the power, although it's also not working this tile, but that's fine. I mean, our needs are being very nicely met, so that's going to be okay. Uh, you are working this tile, so I may as well upgrade you. You're working that one, so let's upgrade you. And that's my point spent for the turn. Okay. Oh, yeah, so culture-wise, uh, let's go to Meteor. It is my highest population center. I'm going to give it the local reforms. So, yeah, research went up. Culture generation went up. Production rates would have improved as well over here. So that's all groovy. Next turn, let's land on the moon. Actually, and how close are we to the information age? Six more turns. All right, battle done here. There's a barbarian ship around, but that seems to be okay. We'll just send you back and park here. Before I forget, let's go, let's go to the moon. We're only one small step away from becoming a multi-planetary species. We must not let another nation take this victory from us. So we'll do hard test landing with probes. We'll test orbital slingshot trajectories. Wow. And there's a lot of options here. But yeah, we're currently sitting at 85%. Did we do it? Did we do it? Is this the success stream already? Or do we not know? Yes? Yes! Hey, hey! That's one small step for man. One giant leap for Sweden kind. Humans on the moon. Look at this. Tons of culture. We unlock the set eye scan. Uh, set eye radio scan. Exploration cultural power. Six full moon landing. Wonderful. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, there it is. SETI scan. SETI radio scan. Gain knowledge. Potentially something else, too. So, I guess if... Uh, I, I actually didn't do the rocketry super early in the age of rocketry. If I had rushed this, rushed the trip to the moon, started running that, presumably that's how we could possibly get to the age of visitors. But democracy points, let's go and do democracy reformed. Um, I might want to wait until this finishes, actually. Because again, we'll lose a third of it. I'm not capped on government stuff. I've got some extra things. 81% chance we'll get an innovation trigger next turn. So let's not worry about it. Go on land. Open negotiations with Murica. Okay, you here. Oh, I was going to send you. Right, that's not my army. Yeah, I'm going to send you to Medio here so that you can provide some unrest generation. Although it's fine. Unrest is grow. Oh, it's growing, but very slowly and not high enough for it to be a problem right now, but you definitely have to keep an eye on that. I like the idea of being here because barbarians occasionally land in this area. Yeah, we'll be fine once those once those troops get there. I mean, they're just peasants and freaking berserker over here, but they'll still do some, enough suppression. It's gonna be fine. This quarry can be upgraded to blast quarry. Yeah, there's no reason not to do that. That's just some free production, which is great. You need another project. You've completed your museum, which is good. Gives you the luxury. Luxury is still not capped out, but that's fine. Uh, food production's okay. We probably want to do something like a scholarly society here. Generates a bunch of education, gives us a book, which is going to be some knowledge. That seems all right. There's also the Research Institute. So power drain, yeah, but knowledge specialist, government XP. These uh, executive offices and stuff are cool. We could have built more of these space centers, but we... Doesn't look like we actually needed it on this particular go. So we'll do that. And yeah, all right, I'll, you know what? Let's move one of these balloons back. That's going to be fine. You can turn, you can toggle the balloons mode over here. You can deploy them, increase sight range and at the cost of movement. Very neat ability. I'm going to park here, do this next turn. Well, having landed on the moon, maybe this is a good place to put in a cut. Oh, there we go. We got our innovation event kicking in. The International Space Station. Yes, the scientists of Sweden believe through global cooperation, a new station can be built as a center for learning and research. With these innovation events, you can always take them for money. But in this case, unlock diplomatic action to build International Space Station. Cool. Is it actual diplomatic power? Diplomatic action. Wait, is it... Oh, look at that. So yeah, I have an envoy established over here, which is great. We could make some demands and things, but we're not going to do this. Open an embassy. 
a wider range of diplomatic uh, options, but International Space Station. So we get knowledge, they'd get knowledge, we'd both get innovation, opinion go up. Let's do it. Let's see, let's see what the response is next turn. For arts, I don't think I'm saving up these powers, so we're going to just trigger the community power over here. So this is unrest reduction, just automatically built in, which is very nice, actually. I've really discovered that unrest is kind of a pain in the butt, so it's nice to be able to not worry too much about it. So Medios should be totally fine now, unrest-wise. Yeah, with the garrison units, it's got a big negative number, so it's going to go back to zero in a moment here. Um, yeah, we can rush this culture yet. Oh, let me do that, and I'm going to grab... Actually, I kind of want to do the study scan, don't I? I was going to say I want a cutting edge here just to boost up our innovation generation. But no! we got to go look for other life. Non-organic repeating pattern has emerged from the background radio static. We should repeat it back. Locked into Age of Visitors. Okay. Um, it said locked, but maybe because we already started working on the Age of Information. Now, again, I am working on a pre-release copy, so some things may be different. Uh, I kind of want to switch over here, but what I also want to do, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a safety save here, because I'm a little curious. Again, this may change between release, it may also change with patches and things. If I go to next turn, is it actually going to switch what I'm working on, or are we still going to be working on the Age of Innovation? Because I want to do Age of In uh, Visitors. I know it says Crisis Age. Probably <laughs> means space aliens are going to attack us all over and terrible things are going to happen. Hey, United States, International Space Station accepted. That's a big knowledge boost. I mean, that is huge. Oh, we're still over here. Well, I want Age of Visitors. I don't care that we've lost progress there. Oh, right. Uh, and then I want to do this, which will give me more innovation. No, we're capped over there. Plus 35 is really good. I've got lots of tile improvements I could do too. So I'd be doing a pass over all of my cities here. First of all, seeing if there's any immediate upgrades. And then if there isn't, is there anything I could do to switch things around? Yeah, I'm not working any of those, um, those harbors. I am working this one, so I may as well just do that. Like, to me, that's that's a no-brainer first. But then, yeah, what we do is we check these. I check to see if there's an overkill of anything. Food, actually, food, we're about sitting at 200%, so I wouldn't want to go and reduce that. I mean, assuming I'm still interested in my city's growing, and I probably am. Housing, we have way more than we need. That's just mostly because of the apartment buildings. Um, but theoretically, I might be able to find some sort of house in here and decide to change um, and uh, to tear out tear down that tile and replace it with something else. So that's a possibility. I actually do have the empty tiles over here. Are you actually working just to basic grasslands? Well, that's not ideal. So I'd want to figure out what I want to replace stuff with over there. But I think what we're going to do is we are going to put a cut in here. Age of Visitors. We'll leave that as a mystery. Again, I do plan on a live stream this over at twitch.tv slash quill18 um, on the release day. So that is Tuesday. I'm going to be starting probably at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And again, if you go to twitch.tv slash quill18, if you do an exclamation mark next stream, you'll get a countdown timer for the next streams if the time zones are a little bit hard to figure out. Uh, other than that, again, thank you very much to Paradox for sponsoring this game. Do check the description box down below for where you can get more information on where you can get Millennia, which is coming out, um, I think, just two days after this video gets released. Uh, so, yeah, check out that info, and I'll see you in game. Bye-bye, everyone.